the spotted dog, the carriage dog, the coach dog, the firehouse dog, the plum pudding dog. These are all nicknames for the Dalmatian, but above all, he is a companion and a best friend. Why don't we start at the beginning? Well, that could be a little difficult, as we can't definitely say when or where the breed came into existence. Many people assume that the Dalmatian originated in Dalmatia, which is a province of Croatia. But the Dalmatian did not originate in Dalmatia, and it is also highly unlikely that even their name came from Dalmatia, although they may have been very common there. Through DNA, or written or passed down records, we know how most dog breeds are related to each other. For example, the miniature pincher is not a miniature Doberman, and they are not at all related, at least not unless you go really, really far back in history. But the Doberman is related to the Manchester Terrier, the Greyhound, the German Shepherd, Rottweiler, and Weimaraner. But the Dalmatian is different. At this time, science cannot relate the Dal to any modern breed, confirming that the Dalmatian is in fact an ancient breed. Although we may not know its exact origins, there are plenty of theories. Many people believe the Dal was developed by breeding a small variety of Great Dane, primarily Harlequins in color, and Pointer breeds. But spotted dogs are known to have been around for millennia. In ancient Egypt, there are hieroglyphs of spotted dogs that very much resemble the Dalmatian we know today. The only difference is in the hieroglyphs, they have cropped ears. In Greece, there's a fresco from around 1700 BC that depicts black spotted and liver spotted dogs chasing wild boar. The name Dalmatian is even a mystery. As I said earlier, it is highly unlikely that the name comes from Dalmatia. Other possibilities are that it derives from Dama, which is Latin for follow deer. There were monks in the 14th century who wore Dalmaticus fur cloaks. And there was also a poet from the 16th century named Georgie Dalmatian. He wrote to a Bohemian duchess to thank her for the Turkish dogs that she gave him. Apparently, Georgie bred the dogs and gave them away as gifts, so people started calling them Dalmatians. Only the problem that arises here is that knowing Georgie was a poet, you would think that a wordsmith would describe the beauty of these dogs' coats if they were in fact Dalmatians, but he never mentioned spots in his letters. The Dalmatian, in fact, is a spotted dog. Although they are born pure white and their spots start to appear around two weeks of age. Their spots might be black or liver brown. And yes, there are cases of lemon or yellow spotted dowels, but this color is a mutation and is caused by the dog having two copies of the E recessive gene. The yellow or lemon color is a fault as are the other spot colors other than black or liver and would be disqualified in the dog show ring. Spots can be as small as a dime or the size of a half dollar, but spots might look bigger than that if they are intermingled and there are some dolls that are born with a patch. These are not a group of intermingled spots, but rather one large spot. A patch is also a disqualification in the show ring, but not in our hearts. The Dalmatian's coat is short and dense and should appear slick and glossy. But just because their coat is short does not mean they don't shed. If you want a Dalmatian, you better be aware that you will have little white hairs all over your clothes, on your floor, and on your furniture. They really do shed a lot, so you might want to carry around one of those little lint rollers. Height is generally between 19 and 23 inches. They are alert and intelligent. Their eyes may be different shades of either brown or blue. Eye color may also depend on the color of their spots. So liver dowels usually have much lighter colored eyes than black spotted dogs. When moving, their tail should be carried just very slightly upright with a curve. 
but not too high and not too curved. They have cat-like feet that are round and compact. Their toenails can be black or white or brown or a combination of both. They have a beautiful, easy-moving gait and can effortlessly trot for hours under or behind or alongside a horse-drawn coach. A well-bred Dalmatian should be happy and outgoing, never shy, but sometimes they are aloof around strangers. Now let's get down to the nitty-gritty, which will probably help you decide if the Dalmatian is the right breed for you. We might not know the exact origin of the breed or the purpose that he was originally bred for, but we know he has a history as a coach dog, which means he is bred for endurance. The Dalmatian could have and would have trotted all day long to keep up with the horses and the coach. He also was tasked to protect the coach, the horses, the people, their valuables from highwaymen, aka robbers. Once at their destination, the Dalmatian would guard the horses and carriage. Same applied for when they became firehouse dogs. But they would also guard the firehouse, their stables, and in the event of a fire, they would run ahead and clear the way for the horse-drawn fire engine. Once at the scene of the fire, the dogs would help calm the horses. But going back to the origin of the Dalmatian with the fire department, the Dalmatian was first employed as a ratter. Apparently, Dalmatians were very successful at ridding stables and firehouses of rats and mice. But once their affinity for horses was recognized, they began working closely with the firemen and horses. You'll probably not find horses at fire stations anymore, but it is entirely possible that you will find a Dalmatian acting as their mascot. Dalmatians still have a love of horses. In fact, if you have both horses and Dalmatians, they should get along very well. There is an event you can participate in called Road Trial. Exhibitors can be on horseback or in a horse-drawn carriage. In this competition, your dog will run aside you and your horse. There are three levels. One is the coaching certificate, then the road dog, and then the road dog excellent. Dalmatians should have the ability to behave in public places and around other dogs, and of course, other animals. These road trials really showcase the Dal's speed and endurance. When a Dalmatian runs with a coach, he could run up to 25 miles a day and may run ahead to clear the way, or he could trot under the rear or front axle or even under the pole, which connects the horses. So just to be clear, he may run ahead of the coach, but in between the horses that are pulling it. So wow, that's truly no fear. I never drove a coach or carriage with my Dalmatians, but one of my Dals used to love to walk right underneath my horse's tail during a trail ride. In the show ring, you'll find the Dalmatian in the non-sporting group, but that doesn't mean they are not a sporty breed. In the early days of the American Kennel Club, there were only two groups, sporting and non-sporting. As time went on and more breeds of dogs began to enter these shows, they started to split the dogs into more groups, such as herding, working, hound, terrier, and toy. So any breed that didn't rightly fit into one of the other categories remained in non-sporting. The Dalmatian is very talented, both mentally and physically. We've already covered their extreme endurance as a coach dog, their ability to clear the road for a coach or a fire carriage, to guard valuables and rid fire stations of rodents. But in their history, they've also worked as draft dogs, shepherd's dogs, military dogs, retrievers, hunters, and they were even used in the circus, most often as the clown's assistants. So doesn't it make total sense for the Dalmatian to be in the non-sporting group? I mean, tell me, how on earth could you fit this talented canine into just one category? You might also wonder, since Dalmatians have so much energy, are they hyper? No, they're not hyper. They do have high energy, but as long as you can give them ample exercise, and as long as they were bred by a knowledgeable, reputable breeder, then you shouldn't have a problem with it. This would also apply when people assume that Dalmatians are mean. I've heard this said 
dozens of times. But again, no, a well-bred Dalmatian is not mean. They should be outgoing, never mean, or never shy. They should also be proud and distinguished. You may have heard stories of Dalmatians having behavioral problems and maybe biting people. But if that's the case, it may not have been the Dalmatian's fault, or the Dalmatian may not have come from a reputable breeder. It's very important for Dalmatians to have knowledgeable and responsible breeders. It's also possible that the dog was not properly socialized or trained. And parents also need to educate their kids and themselves as to how to properly behave around dogs. All dogs are different, even within the same breed. But in general, the Dalmatian is not a breed that wants you right up in their face. So although Dals make great family dogs and can get along famously with kids, you'll just want them to respect boundaries and make sure that your dog has been properly socialized and trained and, of course, comes from a reputable breeder. Another reason it's very important to always use a knowledgeable breeder is with this breed, there are a few health concerns, one of which is deafness. Reliable breeders make it a priority to make every effort to keep deafness and other genetic issues out of their breeding programs. Good breeders will also test their puppies before they go to their forever homes with something called bear testing. That's B-A-E-R, brainstem auditory evoked response. This test can determine if there's any deafness in one or both ears. Around this same time, they will also do other health and temperament screenings. Staying on the subject of health, there are a few other issues that you'll want to be aware of. Dalmatians can form urinary stones. This does not mean that every Dalmatian will suffer from urinary stones, but when it does happen, it's due to a high uric acid excretion. So because of this, high purine yielding foods should be avoided. Just to give an example, organ meats are high in purines. So just be sure to research and get them on a lower protein diet to prevent stones. If urinary stones are formed, it's usually very easy to treat and often can be done in a way that doesn't involve surgery. Other possible health concerns you may want to be aware of are copper storage disease, renal failure, and epilepsy. But really, Overall, a well-bred Dalmatian is a healthy dog. To be sure you can find a reputable breeder, you can contact your local Dalmatian club or go to the website of the Dalmatian Club of America. There you'll be able to find lots of great information, including a list of questions that you should ask the breeder, along with a breeder referral page. Or if you prefer, they will also have resources on where to find a Dalmatian in need of rescue. One side note and a pet peeve of mine, you'll always know you're dealing with a backyard breeder versus a reputable breeder by the way they spell Dalmatian. Dalmatian is spelled with an A, not an O, but many people not in the know spell Dalmatian with an O. A little bit about 101 Dalmatians. So it all started back when Dodie Smith wrote the children's book in 1956 titled the 101 Dalmatians. The plot of the book is a bit different from the 1961 animated film, as well as the live action movies that were released sometime later. Both the book and the movies are favorites of many. These movies, especially the animated version when it was re-released in 1991, skyrocketed the Dalmatian in popularity. Now, Dalmatians aren't for everyone, and what you see in the movie a cute, cuddly Dalmatian might not be what you get. So the rise in popularity also created a rise in uneducated, inexperienced backyard breeders. Those backyard breeders, along with uninformed families, are the main reason and cause of any temperament issues you may have heard of. But Dalmatian clubs during the re-release of that animated film would go to theaters and stand outside with Dalmatians and educate people about the breed when they came out from watching the film. So that helped quite a bit. Now for the moment that you've all been waiting for, probably this entire video. 
Why on earth is the Dalmatian called the plum pudding dog? And what the heck is plum pudding? Unless you're British, Irish, or a baker, you may be like me and have never even heard of plum pudding. But what it is, is a boiled pudding filled with raisins. Yep, raisins, not plums. And it is served as a part of Christmas dinner. The raisins in the plum pudding appear to be spots, which resemble those of a Dalmatian's. Well, I hope I covered everything that you really need to know about this beautiful, unique breed of dog. But if I did leave anything out and you have a question, please feel free to leave that question down below in the comments and I'll get to it ASAP. Well, thanks for watching and hit that subscribe button and join us next time for the next video.